Hi there, Steve Arterburn here. Thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. And you know what? We're talking about procrastination. We went from shame right into procrastination. And here, here is what you might think, that some of the things we're doing are a little redundant. Well, you know what? Romans 12, 2 says this, you could transform your life. It says, be ye transformed by changing the way that you think. Sounds so simple. Well, I could transform my life. I could go from being a procrastinator to not a procrastinator just by changing the way I think. So simple. I don't know of anything more difficult than changing the way you think. I mean, I think you start to think before you ever come out of the birth canal and it's just really hard to change it. Genetically, you're predisposed and then the parenting and the environment and all this stuff. So I'm just spending a little extra time here because I'd really like you to change the way you think. Now, here's, here's a big deal for us procrastinators and recovering procrastinators. We have conflicting priorities. And so guess what we do? If I don't know whether or not to do this or this or this, I will not do anything because, well, I don't know what to do and I don't want to mess anything up. So I just put it off and I go waste some time. So let's look at priorities. You know, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says this, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So for a procrastinator, really it's just figuring out when's the right time to do the right thing in the right way. We've talked about perfectionism. That's not the right way to do anything. You need to do it really well, but no perfect perfectionistic um, standards are you just always going to fail. So let's start with this. Rather than us thinking, what would make me feel good today? Um, or, you know, what could I do that ensures my retirement fund gets better? How about this? God's given me some gifts. God's given me some strengths. How about what should I do, could I do, for God's kingdom? All right, and, and in the next program, I'm going to tell you about that piece. But don't you think we ought to start with God? What is it that God would want me to do? What, how could I meet the need uh, that God wants for me to meet? Because He wants me to be close to Him. I'm going to tell you how to do that. He wants me to be close to Him. He made me. He wants fellowship with me. He wants me to seek Him. All right. So then secondly, rather than what would make me feel better, how about family? What's my family need? So God, family, and then how about me? Let's put me third. Uh, God, family, and me. And, and me in a healthy way, not me in a destructive way, not me go drink two six packs of beer. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about doing things that will enrich my life might even be a little uncomfortable now, but they're really good for me. How do I do anything that wraps all of that together? What is one thing I could do? Well, next time we get together, I'm going to give you uh, how to meet God and family and you priorities all at the same time in 30 minutes. So we'll talk about that on the next time. But look, there are so many conflicting things. I want to go over uh, just a few of the things that we need to think about. And, and maybe some of these uh, on a scale of one to 10, it ought to be a 10 priority. And others, it ought to be a minus 10 priority for whatever reason, like getting drunk tonight, minus 10 priority. But maybe we've taken the minus 10 and that's a plus 10 on our agenda. If you're an alcoholic, that is what's going to happen. Well, you maybe not get drunk, but you're going to drink a lot. So here, we, here are the conflicts. We've got family and what we do there. We've got God. You mentioned that. Uh, not just general family, but we've got marriage. And then we've got friendships. And some people don't have any. And other people have way too many, spending way too much time. Maybe it's not marriage. Maybe it's dating. Uh, then you've got career, work. And how about hobbies? Politics. Well, I'll tell you, we've certainly been in the thick of that. Um, civic involvement, local politics, education, 
recreation, uh, faith and spirituality, physical fitness, creating um, and managing and improving uh, the home, and then fun stuff like paying bills and dealing with finances. Interesting uh, that I'm the co-author of the book uh, about the Emotional Freedom Workbook, and I made this list, and at the end was paying bills and dealing with finances. I can't imagine why that's at the bottom of the list, because it's up there at the top in priorities. You got to deal with that, because it's amazing when you get down to it, how much of everything involves money. And you only get so much of it. It doesn't matter how much you get. It's how much you keep and then can invest. So um, way down on the list here, but it needs to be at the top. So we just go through there and we say, look, uh, I'm not happy. I'm a procrastinator. I need to look at some of the conflicting priorities that I have. Oh, look at that. I love to do art and I'm doing art 20 uh, 20 hours a week. And oh, I love to play golf. I'm, I'm playing golf 30 hours a week. Maybe, just maybe. The reason that I'm not getting anything else done is that I, me personally, selfishly, am really in to my hobbies and my sports and recreation. So that could be an example right there. Here's another example. Just exactly kind of the opposite. I am such a penny pincher I am so focused on how much money I'm going to have and how much I can make that I spend hours and hours on where to invest and how to save and who spent too much and all this. And I'm really controlling and I'm hyper micro managing focused and all of that stuff. Maybe that's the problem. All right. So here's what I would invite you to do. Sit down, make your list, just kind of like the list that I laid out there. And maybe you could just come up with one area that, you know, it, it needs to be a number 10 priority, but you've made it a number three and you could elevate it and you could give it a deadline. And then maybe there's something that's really, if you look at the amount of time you spend, it's a 10, but it really ought to be, doesn't have to go away. It ought to be a two. And maybe you could just put it at two and put a little boundary around it, a limit as to how much time you're going to spend with it. That'd be a great thing. It's a simple thing, but it could help you have the time and the freedom to do all the stuff that maybe you think you procrastinate doing, but maybe you just crowd it out. And once you get your priorities straight, you're not procrastinating because there's no crowding. You set limits on the amount of time you spend on certain things. All right, that's it. If you need some help, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You can get an emotional freedom workbook by calling 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I'll send you a free Bible called the Restoration Bible. All you have to do to get that is to email me at stevesocial at newlife.com and I'll send you a great Bible that will uh, enhance your study and you don't have to pay anything for it. It's free. And so that is Steve Social at newlife.com. I'll see you next time right here, Going Deeper with Steve Arterburn.